welcome to another edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. Today we want to talk about how to hook up our units to shielding gas. Now that's for our TIG or MIG units. Uh, our typical TIG and MIG unit has a hose guard connection coming out the rear of the unit. And we do that to send the units all over the world and have a standard connection that uh, can be adapted to any local environment. Now in the U.S. we actually use a 5H CGA fitting that's standard with most uh, regulators. The problem is that the units that we send out have the post bar fitting, so that if you've got an existing regulator, well, you're going to have to do some modification to the regulator to make it work. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with hose bar connection. It's actually a very good thing because you can actually add long lengths of tubing without a lot of additional expense. And our regulators actually come plump with a hose bar fitting on them as well. Now, if you have a regulator that you want to use, chances are it's going to have the brass threaded connection on the end. Now if you really want to use the regulator, it's okay. Um, you're going to have to either adapt the regulator or cut the fitting off the end and just slide the tubing up onto the hose bar. Now we're going to show you an actually a way that, around that so that you can actually adapt our units to a standard fitting and not have to carve up your regulator when you want to use it. And what we're going to do today, we're going to actually show you how to adapt our units from the hose bar into the standard fitting that we use in the United States here. Now you can find these parts in almost any local welding supply store. And we're going to show you the basics of it and you can fill in the blanks from there. And there are several ways to do this, but this is our way. We're going to show you a very simple way to do it and keep the standard connection for your regulator. Let's talk about our standard regulator we supply with the unit first. Now this unit is good for argon, argon CO2, argon helium uh, mixes. Now we don't recommend it for CO2 use because it can freeze up with you. Now we have it in liters per minute rather than the CFM that you're probably used to for uh, reading flow. Um, we do have a PSI rating over here to read the volume or contents or the pressure left inside the tank. But uh, in our flow, we actually are using liters per minute, which is the international standard. Um, here in the U.S., you're going to recognize the cubic feet per hour rating. And don't confuse these two, because if you're running at 25, where you think you're actually running cubic feet per hour, you're almost putting out 55 uh, cubic feet per hour of gas, and you're wasting a lot of gas. Uh, simply to find your cubic feet per hour, just multiply by 2. Technically, it's 2.1, but if you get by 2, uh, where you're at 10 and you know you're at 20 or 21, uh, you're going to be okay. Um, just don't worry about the uh, point 0.1 and for most of your uh, flow range you're going to be pretty accurate. Now as we said we've got this tubing that we supply with the unit. Now it's a braided reinforced tubing. It's pretty flexible. You're not going to kink it very easily and it comes with hose clamps supplied with the units. Now this may not be satisfactory for some people to connect to their units um, if you don't get them tight, they can leak with you. It's a good idea to use a little soapy water to test the fittings once you get done to make sure you're not leaking if you're going to use this fitting for our units. What we have here is the standard hose bar fitting that we have on the rear of all of our iMigs and most of our power TIGs. Um, this unit here actually has a metric fitting. It's a little bit larger than a quarter inch and a little bit smaller than a 5 16 but either a quarter inch line or a five sixteenths line will fit over this just fine. Um, typically what we do, we'll actually take the hose clamp and the tubing and slide it over this and tighten the hose clamp down. As we said earlier, this isn't the standard tight fitting you're going to find on a lot of your uh, argon regulators. So what we're going to do, we're going to actually show you how to adapt this to a standard type fitting. What I've laid out here are the components that you'll actually need to make this conversion. Now this is fairly cheap and for less than six or seven dollars you can make this conversion um, and that might be on the high side depending on your local retail prices. These fittings are actually available at most local welding supply stores. In fact, this is what I bought at my local one here. And this is actually uh, stuff that they keep in stock all the time. So it's not anything of a special order or anything like this. So I feel reasonably certain that you'll be able to make this conversion yourself uh, if you'll go to your local welding supply store. To go through, I'm going to give you the part numbers on the screen so you know which parts to buy. These part numbers are fairly standard and universal. 
uh, because they are they actually give the description in the part number. What we have here is actually a brass ferrule. It's a .562 inside diameter brass ferrule. Um, this is actually a part number 7325. Now this will be assembled later and we'll show you how to do it. What we have here is a B-sized nut. It's an AW14A. Now we have the AW17 and this is a B-sized uh, compression fitting. It's got a quarter inch hose nipple on it. So it's technically described as a B-size fitting by quarter inch hose nipple. We have a 5 8 right hand inert gas fitting here. This is a AW430 and it's threaded on both sides. It's a female to female coupler and it has the recessed fitting in here for your um, compression type fitting here. Now this is a piece of grade R oxygen uh, tubing. Now this is about four to six inches long. Um, you don't need it very long, you just got a little extra piece here actually. But uh, I want a little extra flexibility in this little pigtail that we're going to create for this. So I got a little extra piece here than I need. Um, but you don't need but about maybe even two inches of this tubing if you want a real short connector. Um, this tubing is actually good for inert gas too, so don't let the fact that it says oxygen here fool you. Uh, many welding supply stores will sell this to you to even replace your uh, inert gas line. Now, I've got a special tool here that's designed for crimping ferrules. Um, they have some that are like vice grip style. This is a larger one that I've got for crimping different type of ferrules. Um, different kind of fittings and stuff, uh, whether it's electronic or whatever for heavy cable. Um, but uh, I'm going to use this to actually do some of the crimping on the ferrule. Uh, just wanted to show you this real quickly. I mean, you can use anything from a pair of pliers to uh, a chisel or whatever to actually create the crimp on the ferrule. Um, you don't necessarily have to buy a pair of pliers like this. Um, it's nice if you've got them, but uh, there's more than one way to do this. What you want to do is first take your tubing here. This is the centerpiece of your connection. So we have the ferrules, and what the ferrule does, it actually slides over this uh, and makes a crimp and holds the other fittings in. Now what we have here, we have the hose bar B-size nipple, and then we have the nut that we were talking about, which is the B-size nut. Now correctly assembled, this goes in just like this. Now, you see the hose barb is sticking out here. The nipple is next to the threaded part here. And you're going to take a wrench and tighten this up. Now, this actually goes into this part here, which is the female-to-female -female connector. To begin with, let's start by sliding the tubing onto the hose barb connector. Now, to get ready to do it, you've got to put the ferrule on first, because you forget to put the ferrule on you've uh, wasted a lot of time. Now you could use a hose clamp here, but I like the ferrule because it makes a nice permanent connection. Now I'll simply just take this and start sliding it on. Now if you've got a little problem getting this on, uh, a little soap or something right here will actually help this slide all the way in. You don't want to put any kind of oily stuff or anything on here because it will get into your hosing and then you'll create some contamination while you're trying to weld. completed the crimp, I may have over crimped it just a little bit because of the type pliers I was using. They actually make a set of pliers that you can use to crimp these fittings. Um, they're about 25 bucks, but this is what I had already. So what I just did was actually adapt the uh, pliers to what I was crimping. It worked pretty good and it's solid and secure. It's not the prettiest crimp in the world, but it'll work. Now like I said, you could use actually a hose clamp here if you want that appearance or that look. Um, I just opted for the uh, ferrule type because it does hold very tightly when you crimp it. Alright, next our job is to actually slide this end of the hose up onto this fitting here. Now this may be a little more of a challenge because it is just a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. But this will slide up and once we get it seated deep enough, um, we're going to crimp this fitting with the uh, ferrule attached to it. So we're going to put the ferrule on first 
and then we're going to slide it up onto the unit. I'd like to talk about the fitting just a moment. This is actually a double-ended, double female fitting. It's a 5 8 right-handed thread inert gas fitting. This is the standard fitting you're going to find on most MIGs and TIGs sold in the U.S. Now what we want to do, because it is double-ended, we're going to actually screw it onto this fitting here. And the design of this fitting is actually a compression type, so this little ball shape piece here will actually fit snugly down here and you won't have to typically use any pipe thread or pipe sealant on this thread here. Now before we actually put the pressure and the gas to it, we'll actually tighten this unit together. Now this is actually all you need to do to convert this unit over to a standard type fitting. And what we have here, of course, it's flexible so you can move it around and that actually works to your advantage. If you've got your welder close to a tight space or something, you can actually come straight out of the unit and create a bend without kinking it. Now if you have a standard U.S. argon regulator fitting, you, all you need to do is just screw it into this part at this point. The question comes up sometimes, how do I adapt the regulator to the standard type fitting? Well, that's pretty easy to do. We're using the same parts initially, and we have the ferrule here, and we have the nut and the nipple fitting, which is the compression type, and we simply slide it together. Then, of course, we've got the standard uh, end fitting that you're going to need for most MIG and TIG welders in the United States. And all we have to do is simply screw this together. Now, of course, I haven't uh, crimp this yet, but if I were to want to use this regulator uh, in this fashion, all I need to do is crimp this and tighten it together and we're good to go. Of course, if I wanted to use this regulator with any other MIG or TIG unit that I had, I'd have to create this type fitting to begin with. Um, our regulators are available for separate purchase and sometimes people do purchase them to go with other MIG and TIG units and this is the type fitting that you're going to need to make this match up to the MIG or TIG that you have. Now, one final note about this, you need to take some soapy water and just put on these fittings here to make sure that you don't have any leaks while it's under pressure. Um, if you got a severe leak, um, you may have to redo these fittings, uh, but typically if you've got a minor leak, uh, you can recrimp it or crimp it a little bit more and it'll stop the leaks. Well, that concludes today's video. If you have any more questions about plumbing your unit up to shielding gas with a standard regulator or even our regulator, please feel free to give us a call.